Welcome to Wrestling With Heart, a podcast looking at pro wrestlers giving back to their community. Join me, Stanley Carr, as I interview wrestling's hottest names who use their platforms as entertainers to raise awareness and do community service. Hello and welcome to another edition of Wrestling With Heart. This is the show where we talk with professional wrestlers and professional wrestling personalities about their lives in and outside of the ring, as well as doing acts of charity work, community service, volunteering, and spreading positivity. We're all about the positivity here on the show, and I've got a very special guest with me this week. She is the former WOW Women's Champion, currently a part of Women of Wrestling. I am pleased to welcome the one and only, The Beast. Welcome to Wrestling With Heart. Oh, well, thank you for having me. It's so good to be here. Yes, it's my pleasure. So... Walk me through your childhood. Tell me about where you're from. Um, I'm from California, Southern California, where I uh, grew up in an area where, you know, you found a lot more people you didn't want to be like, as opposed to people you did want to emulate, if that makes any sense. Sure, sure. It's a big city and lots of people walking around. Hollywood, LA, is that what you're referring to? Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely a place where you're going to meet all kinds of people, a lot of big celebrities live there, and you want to emulate, like you said, people that you idolize, look up to, people that you would consider role models. So your life, tell me about who were some of your role models. Um, I come from a sports background. My mother was huge into boxing. So, you know, she introduced me to people like Muhammad Ali, to Frazier, to Tyson. Mike Tyson was like, one of her favorites. And um, my dad was big into track and field. So, you know, he introduced me to Carl Lewis and and Flojo, who was, uh, once I saw her, it was just kind of game over for me, you know? Sure, sure. Athletics definitely has so much positivity surrounding that kind of medium and that form of entertainment. What is it about athletics that drew you in that got you hooked? Um, it's the, it's that you versus you type of mentality. You know what I mean? It's pushing yourself as hard as you possibly can to when your brain is yelling for you to stop, stop. We can't do this anymore. You take over and you overcome it and you say, no, I can do this a little bit longer this time, a little bit longer this time until you are just the best version of yourself possible. And sports gives you that. It gives you that, that barometer to measure yourself by and nowhere else do you kind of find that where it's just a, a physical, like, Yes, you cross this finish line in this amount of time, or you pin this person one, two, three, and yes, you are you are clearly better now. So okay, yeah, I I love that. It's all about the grit and determination. Yes. And for you, uh, now you were an athlete growing up, right? Tell me about yeah. some of the sports you played in school. Oh, I ran track. Um, I was a sprinter. I did field events. Let's see, I did the 100, the 200, the one by four, the two by four. I did triple jump, long jump, high jump. Um, I just, sport. I played basketball. I, I, I'll let you know a little secret. The Beast was a cheerleader at one time. Go figure. That's why I got a love of picking up people and throwing them down, I guess. Um, as an adult, you know, I kept into sports. I got into weightlifting. I started doing Krav Maga, I trained MMA, like it just never stopped for me. I've always just loved sports, just pushing myself at athleticism of everything. I love it. And when you're picking up a sport, you know, you learn it. It's like music. You know, you start on one instrument, you learn another one, a whole set of new chords, whole set of new rules, and just one just keeps on building up onto another one. So it's, it's, it's so fascinating that you were able to pick up on so much. So was wrestling something that you watched as a kid? It was, it was. I, I like to say I grew up with way too many brothers. I have a lot of older brothers and every week I always wanted to be, you know, around my brothers as much as possible when I was the youngest. And so they didn't kind of didn't want me around as much, but wrestling was that thing where they would allow me to kind of hang out with them and we would watch wrestling together. And after the show was over, they would practice all their new moves on me. And, uh -huh. um, yeah. Oh, that's okay. It's okay. You know, you start to take a beating in it and it makes you a better person afterwards. And, but then there became a point where I was beating them, you know, my moves were out doing their moves and that builds another kind of strength in you where, you know, you believe in yourself and it's those small victories every day that kind of like, Oh, Oh, I can do this. I can do more. So yeah. it was a good thing. It was a good thing. 
And it was like an epiphany that went off in your head and, and you were like, I got to do this. Now, when you were watching, when you were watching wrestling, who were some of your favorites? Um, I always, I, I never had a, a particular person that I enjoyed. I, I enjoyed the idea of the most aggressive wrestler in the ring, the most dominant wrestler in the ring. There was something about watching a wrestler stand over an opponent that he had just beaten and, and, and being so sure of themselves and so confident in who they were that it seemed cocky almost, but it was just confidence. And I wanted that for myself. And so I'm so happy that I got to get involved myself into wrestling because as you know, like not everyone can get involved into wrestling. It's not accessible to everyone. And so I was lucky enough to be able to have that chance to where something that I loved growing up now I can do it. Maybe I can, you know, spark that same love, that same self-confidence in someone else. Right, right. And I know the training process, just like with the sports you've talked about, you know, it's 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 a different kind of different kind of uh level of work. You know, you really it, it's it's intense and you, you do so much with your body. Yeah, intense is the perfect word and it takes so much discipline. So physically, you have to be there. You have to show up every single day through the bumps and the bruises and the aches and the pains. And you have to fight through it. But also mentally, you have to show up because we all know like our minds will give up way faster than our bodies will sometimes. So when it takes that special kind of toughness to keep pushing your brain forward. Exactly. Like you had mentioned with your brothers, the, you know, you both, you all were messing around you know, play fighting with each other. And then eventually you started being the one that, that was victorious in the end. So you kind of had to do that, but apply that to the training centers. What was your experience like with the training process? Oh, it was rough. It was rough. I always thought that, you know, coming from an athletic background, you know, I'm, I'm tough. I can take a punch. You know, I have a black belt in Krav Maga. I've trained MMA. I can take a punch. No problem. I thought I would just come on in and just, you know, it'd be a cakewalk. And while I am the beast, things, you know, I will always get things done. It was not that easy. You know, I stumbled, I fumbled, I fell a lot and had to like give myself those self-talks and remind myself who I was because it's not the same. It's, it's, I always say it's like, it's like playing chess while someone's trying to rip one of your body parts off. Like, how do you stay focused and think ahead and think of what needs to be done while you're in some kind of pain, some kind of hold? So it's tough. It's tough. People don't understand what really goes into all of these things. Exactly. It's it's very it's very intense, and like you said, lots of bumps, lots of bruises, a lot of discipline. Very hectic schedule. When you when you started training, was there any like pieces of advice that you took from your trainers that you still apply to today? Oh, everything. I believe, I believe wholeheartedly, if you're going to drop breadcrumbs for me, I'm going to pick them up and put them in my pocket for later. Um, perseverance, just keep going. Don't stop and stay out of your head. You know, our heads, oh, our brains are liars. They create fear, they create doubt, and it's not a real thing. And we have to learn to like, you know, stay out of here and just move forward. Just go, jump both feet, just go. Don't think, yeah. just do. <laughs> it's it's risk-taking. That's what it is. It's risk taking. And you talking to you uh, so far, you've taken a lot of risks in your career and you've played so many sports. You're doing the same thing with wrestling, get into wrestling, train, work out, discipline, hard work. Tell me about your first few matches. What were they like? Uh, my first few matches were fun because I think people didn't know what to expect from me when I first came out. I mean, when I came out, I was like nothing else ever at WOW. You know, WOW had never seen something like The Beast and the WOW fans had never seen anything like The Beast. So when I came out, I dominated. I I <laughs> I feel sorry for my opponents, honestly. Like, I think I kind of owe some of them an apology for some of the things I did to them. Um, really? But it was, it was, well, I mean, if you've seen some of those earlier matches, it was... Ooh, I had to, ooh, it was full unleashed beast. I'll just say that for you. And if you don't know, go back to WoW and um, watch some of those matches. Get yeah, yourself I, acquainted. I definitely, I've definitely seen some of your work. It's, it's really incredible. The, the, the strength, the power that you display. It's unlike anything that I've ever seen before. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I, you know, I grew up. You know, when you grow up as a young lady, they, they, the world tells you to be quiet and be soft and sit down and be nice. And 
thankfully to my brothers and to the influences I had growing up, I learned that no, I can be whoever, whatever I want to be. I can look how I want to look. I can, I can be as strong physically as I want to be and still be beautiful and still be, you know, a female wrestler. And that's okay. And, and hopefully I get to push that on to some other people, you know, to some other young ladies who can use some motivation. Exactly. And I love watching the product that you guys put on. I think there's really nothing in the world, nothing like, like women are wrestling. I've watched several episodes, watched several matches. Uh, it's really remarkable. The athleticism that you guys display in there. When, when you first heard a wow, tell me about what made you decide to join the promotion. Um, it's just, it's the way that they highlight women. The way that women are not just, you know, an afterthought on the card, we, they're the whole show. We, women are, you know, from start to finish, everything at WOW is to put the women ahead. And these women come from different backgrounds. You know, there's not just a cookie cutter mold of what this female wrestler should look like at WOW. You know, there's all different types of ethnicities, different types of body types, and um, different backgrounds. We, you know, we have professionals who work for WOW, um, teachers, professors, lawyers. Um, we have blue collar women. We have white collar women. We have everything you can think of in between. And that's that representation, I think, for, for other women, for other young girls. I think that's important. I absolutely agree with that. A lot of diversity. A lot of diversity. That's definitely important for sure. How did it feel to win the women's championship for the first time? Um, it felt well deserved. I earned it, you know. I earned it. I went out and showed who the beast really was when everyone kind of doubted what I could be or what I was coming out. Um, I went out and showed when they kept telling me I had to wait my turn and prove myself. Imagine someone telling you you have to prove yourself when you already know that you're the best at what you do. So it felt well deserved, but I also was grateful for the opportunity. You know, I could be sitting on the couch twiddling my thumbs wishing, but instead I was out there, you know, standing with my hand raised. So you have to be grateful and taking that moment and just lock it in for life, which I, I'm, you know, on the bucket list of, of accomplishments. And that one's definitely a top. Oh, no doubt about that. Who have been some of your favorite opponents to work against? Um, easy. Easy question. Jungle Girl. Jungle Girl is one of my favorite opponents. And if I could have a chance to wrestle her again, I think that uh, it would be something special. I, I'm going to keep saying this out loud because I'm hoping the powers that be or the universe or whoever makes this happen because she is a phenomenal opponent. She is a phenomenal wrestler and she's a phenomenal person. So, I mean, you can't, I mean, you just can't pass by that, you know? No, no. It's all about who, who you have the best chemistry with. And Jungle Girl definitely seems like the one that's the, the constant. It yeah, I, I think you can you be hard pressed to find someone who does not like Jungle Girl. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the rematch when it happens. <laughs> you get the invite. You'll be the first one to know. Yes. Well, let's switch gears and talk about some of the charity work and volunteering experiences that you've done outside of wrestling. Tell me about some of the organizations that you've partnered with over the years. Oh, I've worked with um, some great programs. I've worked with one uh, called Girls on the Run, and where basically you get these young ladies between uh, fourth grade and seventh grade. We teach them, we, we prepare them to run a 5K race. But the whole point is not the race itself, because during that training, um, which is so many months long, during that training, we're teaching self self esteem goals. We're, so we're teaching them, you know, to love yourself. We're teaching them, you know, to not bully each other, to hold each other up, and to how to hold yourself up. And that all these lessons are being learned while we're training and running. And so once they finally get to that race and they cross the finish line, there there's so much better because of it they're so much stronger because of it not because they can physically run a race which also feels great but because they've learned who they are and how to be better persons for themselves um so that was one of my favorite ones um and currently i am working with a program called school on wheels 
And so what it is is that we go to Skid Row and we tutor kids there. So there's homeless kids, kids living in shelters, their cars, motels on the streets. And they don't have all the, they don't have accessibility to all the, you know, the things that other kids take for granted. So we go there and we, we tutor them and we just kind of listen to what they need. And that's my, that's been my favorite right now. Oh, that's very, that's very special. That's very cool. I, I, I've never even thought of something like that before. The amount of people that are not able to go to school and actually get an education, uh, they're definitely missing out on something that's valuable. We definitely yeah. take the education uh, system for granted at times because we're we're so consumed with other things that we forget like, hey, this stuff is very important. And it's, it's hard to focus on your math homework when you haven't eaten for the day or you don't know where you're going to sleep or, you know, some schools, they don't allow you to attend if you don't have a permanent address. So these are things that you don't, we don't, you know, we don't think that these kids, these poor children have to go through. And then there's no one there to listen to them or to, to be that, to see them. So it feels very nice to be able to go there and, and be a strong presence, whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, for someone who just has so little. How long have you volunteered with this group? Um, I've been with this group uh, about two years now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of my passion projects. Um, During the pandemic, you know, you know, they had to go online, which was good that they still found a way to keep, keep the program going. Mm -hmm. um, but me personally, I love being one-on-one -on -one with the kids. Like Beast, don't let this hard exterior fool you. Beast is for the kids. So it was feels very nice to be there one-on-one -on -one with them. And, you know, sometimes they ask me questions about wrestling or what have you, what not. They want to see a few moves and, you know, after homework's done, then, you know, Beast will run them around a little bit. It's the reward system. You got to exactly, love it. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. What's your favorite subject to teach? Um, definitely not math. <laughs> definitely not math. Um, I like history. History is my favorite. Um, just hearing about the stories from the past and what people have had to endure and what they've overcome. I think it teaches life lessons, you know, it teaches, it teaches compassion, it teaches strength. And I, I enjoy that quite a bit. That's definitely a very, very valuable subject to learn. All of them are, but definitely that particular one. Uh, History is a really good subject to teach. So that's, that's amazing. It's really amazing. And they get to learn from you and they, and the experience, it's just out of the, out of this world. It really is. I got yeah, hope. It. Yeah. Hopefully one day as these kids grow up, they'll be watching TV and be like, Hey, wait a minute. That was my tutor. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. Right. I know. That's awesome. So tell me about What's next? We'll see. We'll see where the chips lay, right? I'm always going to push to be the best version of me possible. It's my hope that WOW starts to, uh, you know, we already have a global impression out there. And um, that's wonderful because I think we're the only female promotion that's ever done that. And we're doing it now currently. So I would love to see WOW, you know, take live shows global for us to, you know, for, to have the fans and people who didn't, haven't seen WOW yet, to be able to have that face-to-face -face interaction with us, because it's a, it's a different ball game when you see us live. I mean, we're great online, we're great on TV, but when you're sitting there live and watching all the action go down, it's a different energy. And I think everyone should experience that at least once. And there's definitely a market now for women's wrestling. There's definitely like this you see more female yeah. fans really oh, sure. passionate about women's wrestling and the men too, of course, but definitely nowadays you see a lot of people, especially young girls really gravitate towards professional wrestling, which I think is really cool to see that it's changed. Yes. And I feel like for the most part, they were always there. They just weren't given that outlet, that venue, because there was a time where wrestling, where the female wrestlers or the girl wrestlers, as they called them, were, were an afterthought. You know, there was a time where there was the pillow fights and the bra and panty matches. And that's no one is, is impressed or inspired by that. And so it's, it's good to see that WOW came along and just always saw that missing 
peace and always fill that void. So it's good to see them now so visual, so vocal to where people are like, there it is. There's that thing I was missing, but didn't know what it was. And it's in wow. And hopefully we get to reach out to some more people and keep inspiring. Yes. And, de and definitely you've inspired me by having, with having this conversation. So let's, we'll finish up with this question. Um, with all of the stuff you've done with wow and the stuff that you're doing outside of wrestling, why do you feel passionate about helping out in your community? Because I have the opportunity to, because there are people out there who have a need and don't have a voice. And how dare I have a chance to help anyone, someone, you know, growing up there, I could have used a person like me, you know, I could have found my inner beast quicker, faster, and maybe I hadn't, couldn't, didn't have to go through some of the things I went through growing up. And if I get that chance to inspire some person, whether it's a young girl, young boy, or an adult person to strive to be better, to say, oh, if she's doing this, why can't I try? Why can't I, you know, get out there and, 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 and take a chance on myself? If I can do that for one person, that would make my day. That would be, it would make it all worth it. The bumps, the bruises, the breaks, it would make it all worth it. I love to hear that. Well, this has been wonderful having you on here. And I just want to say thank you. It means a lot to me, to the listeners and viewers that are watching this on YouTube. Where can people find more about you? Um, well, you can find me at wow underscore the beast across all social media platforms. If you want to check out the show, and I suggest you do, go to wowe.com and it will have listings for your area. And, you know, it will also have all the other wrestlers and myself included that you can check out and where to find everyone. All right. Thank you again. And you're more than welcome to come back. Oh, I, you bet. You bet. I will be there. All right. Take care. Thank you so much. You have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. This is Wrestling With Heart. I hope you found this podcast to be informative and entertaining. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and look out for the next edition.